The illustrated message you are about to hear was preached by me, Paul G. Humber, over 31 years ago. The service was held outdoors in the area you see in the parking lot there near the church building. But imagine preaching about Jesus' resurrection from the Old Testament. There are 17 passages in the Old Testament which anticipate and or predict the resurrection of Jesus. And one of them is shared here in this message. If you would like to hear about the other 16, they are given in the last slide of the presentation in this video. There is also contact information there so you can get a fuller explanation. Now I'm just about ready to put on the uh, tape recording so there will be an initial sound that you'll hear but uh, it'll uh, you'll see, hear the message very soon I'm wondering how, how many of you would like a real fiery uh, sermon this morning <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> as I was uh, walking into the parking lot uh, one of the members of the Pilgrim Church said to me, The Lord is risen. And uh, I said, Good morning or something. I didn't respond uh, appropriately. She expected me to say, The Lord is risen indeed. And perhaps we all ought to try that. And if you don't get it the first time, don't feel bad, neither did I. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Good. There is something very fitting about uh, gathering and singing some of these uh, hymns that we've been singing, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, on Easter, Sunrise, Resurrection Day morning. And uh, many of us will be returning to uh, various services. I know here we're going to be, I believe, hearing the Hallelujah Chorus. There's something so appropriate about singing on the Day of Resurrection. And uh, you also know those of you that are getting to know me a little better, is that it's important to uh, consider everything that we do in the light of Scripture. And uh, so we ask the question, what do the Scriptures have to, si to say about singing praises to God on Resurrection Day morning? And the first thing I'd like to uh, say along this line is that there is a songbook in the Bible. Some of us perhaps uh, don't really think of the book of Psalms as a song book, but it certainly is. And uh, you're familiar with some of the Psalms. One of them that we sing is all people that on earth do dwell sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with fear, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. That's from Psalm 100. And then Psalm 23. Many of you remember these words. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. <clears throat> In pastures green, he leadeth me the quiet waters by. And there are other hymns that have been adapted. For example, the hymn, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun, is an adaptation of Psalm 72. Joy to the world, our Christmas carol, is an adaptation of of Psalm 98, and O oh God, our help in ages past is an adaptation of Psalm 90. There's an important lesson here. We should give more attention to the inspired songbook of the scriptures than we do. Secondly, did you know that Jesus himself sang the Psalms? And of course, if this is true, that's all the more reason why we should be giving more attention to the book of the Psalms. You see, we might say, well, in the Old Testament it was appropriate to sing the Psalms, but if Jesus and his uh, life on earth is recorded in the New Testament and he sang the Psalms, perhaps also we should give consideration more than we do. We think of David as the sweet psalmist of Israel, but what about David's greatest son, even the Lord Jesus Christ? Now you might ask the question, where in the scripture does it say that Jesus sang praises? 
And if you have your scriptures, I would encourage you to open them to the second chapter of Hebrews. That's a rather unusual uh, passage to <clears throat> consider if you want to show that Jesus himself sang praises to our God. In the second chapter of Hebrews, <clears throat> verse 12, the author here is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ and making the point that Jesus is not ashamed to call us, the children of God, his brethren. And to establish that point, he quotes from Psalm 22, and he says, saying, uh, let me just, uh, halfway through verse 11, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will proclaim thy name to my brethren. Now listen to this. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing thy praise. Now there is the word, huneo, the Greek word for him that we have. There, in this passage, we are reading a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ that he would hymn praises to God in the midst of the congregation. Now let us turn briefly to that psalm. Psalm 22, and let us see that this indeed is a psalm that is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first verse, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The first person singular there is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. As you well know, <clears throat> Jesus quoted that passage from the cross. Skip down to verse 7 and 8. All who see me sneer at me. Here this is written, uh, by David a thousand years before the crucifixion. And yet, <clears throat> here's a prophecy of the scorn that he would receive while on the cross. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with the lip. They wag their head saying, Commit your, yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him because he delights in him. Take a look at verse 14 and 15. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaves to my jaws, and thou didst lay me in the dust of death. You remember the words of Christ at the cross, I thirst. Then take a look at verses 16 and 17. For dogs have surrounded me, and bands of evildoers have encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Prophecy of the nails going right into the hands and feet of Christ. I can count all my bones. There's the prophecy that his bones would not be broken. They look and stare at me. Notice also in verse 18, they divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. This is a prophecy. This is a messianic psalm, speaking prophetically of the Lord Jesus Christ. But notice verse 22. I will tell of thy name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise thee. The word there in the Hebrew is halal, the word praise, and sometimes can be used with respect to singing praises to God. In the New Testament it has been translated with the Greek word humneo, him, I will praise, I will sing praises. Here's a prophecy that Jesus himself would praise our God. But we ask the question, is there any evidence anywhere in the New Testament that Jesus did sing in the midst of the congregation praises? to God. Well, if you turn to the 26th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, verse 30, <clears throat> before going out into the Garden of Gethsemane, or the Garden of the Mount of Olives, we read, and after singing a hymn, that's the same word, singing a hymn, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Notice it says, they went out, the disciples as well as Christ. All the more reason, then, why we should give more attention than we do to the book of Psalms. But you may ask the question, why on resurrection, Sunday morning when you choose to direct our attention to the Psalms? Aren't the Psalms old? Hundreds of years before the resurrection. How could they be appropriate on resurrection morning? Well, the Psalms spoke prophetically of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and Jesus himself directs our attention to the Psalms on Resurrection Sunday morning. If you take a look 
at Luke chapter 24. The very passage, the very chapter that we was read just a few moments ago. And take a look at verse 44. You read these words. Now he said to them, and Jesus is speaking, and this is following the resurrection. These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he goes on and he opens their minds to open the scriptures and notice what he says. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. There Jesus is saying that the Old Testament spoke of the resurrection. But where you might ask, where in the Psalms is the re reference to the resurrection? Well, if you turn to Psalm 30, and I just want to consider this briefly this morning. This is just one of many Psalms. Some of you who were in, in attendance at the Lenten dinner, uh, we sang a portion of Psalm 16, which also spoke of the resurrection. But Psalm 30, I believe, is certainly a Psalm that is appropriate so often when we study the Psalms, we read the Psalms egocentrically. We put ourselves in the center. We identify with the Psalm, what the Psalm is saying, and we view the message as speaking to us. But actually, we need to be reminded of Christ's words. In the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to John, verse 39, where he says, You search the Scriptures, speaking to the Jews, because you think in them you have eternal life, and it is these that bear witness of me. We should be Christocentric in our reading and studying of the Scriptures. It is to be sure that uh, the Scriptures apply to us, but only as we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection. Let us take a look then at Psalm 30 briefly. Verse 1 says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. Thou hast let not let my enemies rejoice over me. And Jesus <clears throat> quoted from the cross, Psalm 22, 22, portion of Psalm 22. He also quoted Psalm 31. Psalm 30, this psalm that we're considering now is between those two psalms. And certainly if Jesus knew Psalm 22 and Psalm 31, he knew this psalm. And if he quoted those two other psalms on the cross, is it not possible that on that resurrection morning, perhaps even before he met anyone else, he was reflecting on the truth of Psalm 30. I will extol praising the Father for raising him from the dead. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not let my enemies rejoice over me. You remember the scorn and the ridicule that Jesus received from men like us there on the cross. And he's praising God that the enemies will not rejoice over him. It's important. For us to identify, we read in Hebrews chapter 12, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Take a look at verse 2. O Lord my God, I cried to thee for help, and thou didst heal me. He can look at his hands and he can see how the nail prints, the wounds that he had received were healing. It is likely that one of the psalms that Jesus sang with the disciples as they went out to the Mount of Olives is Psalm 116. And notice in that psalm, there's a prayer to God for His help. O Lord, my God, I cry to Thee for help. Thou didst heal me. Psalm 116 we read in verses 3 and 4. The cords of death encompassed me and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, save my life. And God the Father answered that prayer as Jesus with his brothers, I believe, very likely was singing that prayer 
after they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mall of Owls. And here in this verse 2, O oh Lord my God, I cried to thee for help. Think of the agony of Christ in the garden. O oh Lord, and thou didst heal me. And then verse 3, O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from Sheol. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. David, to be sure, is uh, reflecting uh, on some experience in his own life. But inspired by the Spirit of God, he is speaking also in its ultimate sense in prophetically of the Lord Jesus Christ, who would be rescued from death. Can you rejoice with Christ? Can you identify? So often we ask the question, can, can Jesus understand the, the, the agonies and the struggles that I am going through? And to be sure, uh, He can. He understands all our problems. But there's a sense in which Jesus would like to, us to identify and empathize with His concerns too. You remember that passage? I think it's in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Where uh, in verse 28, well, I'll start with 27. Jesus is speaking, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Here Jesus is encouraging his disciples not to be distraught. But notice in verse 28, You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced. Because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Now, there are a lot of people that misunderstand that passage. They think that that's perhaps a reference to the fact that God the Father is more important than Jesus. That's not what it means. Jesus is in the state of humiliation. The Father is up there in glory. And Jesus is returning to His Father. In fulfillment of Daniel 7.13, One like unto the Son of Man who appears before the Ancient of Days. It's a day of triumph. Jesus is, who for the joy that was set before him, he's, he's anticipating that time when he's going home to be with his Father. And he's saying, you should rejoice instead of being sorrowful that my struggle is almost over. You should rejoice with me because I go to my Father. He's greater than I. He's not here in the state of humiliation. And I'm going to, and Christ wants us to identify with a tremendous victory that He, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, had over death and making salvation possible for us. And then we're told in verse 4, Sing praise to the Lord, you His godly ones, and give thanks to His holy name. How appropriate it is for us to consider this psalm here. And then finally, the last verse that we want to consider, verse 5. Why? For his anger is but for a moment. Think of what this would have meant to Jesus. There he's on the cross and he cries, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we have some understanding. It's because God had to turn us back on Jesus. Jesus was bearing our sin, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one that God provided. Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide the Lamb. Not Abraham's only begotten son, but God the Father's only begotten son. There on the cross, dying, God pouring out His wrath on His only son. Why? So that we might have eternal life. But identify with the tremendous sense of triumph of this verse 5. For His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. What's the conclusion? Well, if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, you, we all who identify with Christ and His tremendous salvation for us, we fit into that category of verse 4 where it says, Sing praise to the Lord, you His godly ones, and give thanks to His holy name. And that's one of the reasons I've distributed that little song. We want to sing that. We want to obey this scripture. To sing praises to our God from the Psalms and appreciating and identifying with the tremendous triumph of our Lord over death and over hell and over sin and has ascended to the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
but others here. It's not impossible that there's someone here who is still in the state of rebellion against God. You've closed Jesus Christ out of your life, and you know you have. Well, there's a tremendous message for you. Salvation is available for you. You must submit the filthiness of your life before the tremendous cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is available. And you must come to Christ by the way of the cross. You must humble your heart and say, God, be merciful to me, the sinner, and save me for Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Okay, let us... Uh, uh, have a brief word of prayer before we sing these first five verses you'll, you'll know the tune it's to the tune uh, stand up stand up for Jesus uh, you soldiers of the cross but it's this psalm Psalm 30 and I want you to try to understand it in terms of uh, the tremendous fulfillment that it has in Jesus Christ let us pray our Heavenly Father we thank you for this time that we've had of considering us portion of your word. Truly your scriptures are very rich and we need to be diligent students of your scriptures even Father as the Lord Jesus while he was on this earth demonstrated his close uh, attachment uh, and desire to walk his life in accordance with the scriptures. We pray dear God that your Holy Spirit the spirit that inspired your word would work in our heart and tune our lips to sing your praise. Bless us, and we do praise you for the tremendous salvation that we have in Jesus, your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing this Psalm 30, Resurrection Joy. I'm going to ask you to turn to hymn number 237 as we close today. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Number 237. I would encourage those who are staying for breakfast to do so. But I'd also encourage you to sing out in the hymn of 237. Close. Hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Thank 
the benediction. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of the morning. We thank you for Calvary, what it means to us, that through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ we have salvation. And two, that through his resurrection we have life and have it more abundantly. And we want to express our joy this morning. We do so with praise and thanksgiving for the Lord Jesus Christ who himself gave his life that we might have eternal life. And now, Father, may your grace, mercy, and peace bless, preserve, and keep you both now and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, folks. Have a blessed day. Thank you, God. I didn't see <clears throat> Now, as mentioned at the beginning, there are 16 other passages in addition to Psalm 30 which predict and or foreshadow Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is the Messiah. It, they were written hundreds of years prior and they are in Genesis 22, Leviticus 23. I'm not going to read them all. However, if you would like more information about these 16 additional passages, feel free to write to me at paulhumber at verizon.net or 327 Green Lane, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19128. I have, uh, I could send it as an email attachment or I could even print them out and send it that way. There's also a book, uh, 400 Prophecies, Foreshadowings, and Appearances of Christ in the Old Testament that I've written, and I'd be happy to tell you about that. Write me an email, and uh, I can send you that paper as an attachment. Take care, and may God work His purposes in all of our lives.